I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education. Here with another Teacher of the Year profile, we're speaking with Sue Walden, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the San Juan Unified School District for 2015. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, tell us about yourself. Tell us uh, the name of your school, you know, where you teach, and, and tell us what you teach. Um, I teach at Detterding Elementary School. It's in Carmichael. I teach third grade, um, but my classroom is a little bit different. My classroom is filled with identified gate students, and so it's called a rapid learner classroom. Um, I teach third grade curriculum and fourth grade curriculum, depending upon which subject. So in English and math, I teach more of a fourth grade curriculum, a little bit advanced in third grade uh, curriculum for social studies and science. So my students um, get a lot of different types of Um, different type of curriculum during the day in the school year. So when you say identified gate students, what does that mean exactly? They have been tested by the school district and identified on the school district, or San Juan's district's uh, gate identified um, testing. Okay, so what is that like when, you, when you've got um, third, you know, different grade levels plus different subjects all at once? That seems like a lot of juggling. How do you well, do it's it? really not too. It's it's the students are all a third grade students, but okay. I'm teaching two different uh, areas of curriculum. So I teach fourth grade curriculum and third grade curriculum in reading and math, so that they have the advanced, the year advanced, mm -hmm. plus the third grade curriculum that is what a t traditional third grade student would get. So yeah, it's kind of like a juggling. I feel like I'm um, walking two sides of an aisle and to get mm -hmm. it all in during the day, but it makes um, keeps us all on our toes and it makes the, the learning exciting. So what kind of a challenge do you face with uh, the Gate students who um, they really are sponges? I mean, they're really, they really want more and more, don't they? The challenge is staying, trying to stay a step ahead of them. Mm -hmm. and being able to figure out how to answer their questions that I don't know. It's usually, I'm going to look into that and I'll get back to you. And bringing back that information because their questions are definitely um, deep and involve more than just a quick answer of, yes, the, the plants use photosynthesis and chlorophyll. I mean, I've got to go a little <laughs> bit deeper for them because they can handle it because they're, they have that... Um, deep um, desire to know as much as they can about the area that they are so um, interested in. Mm -hmm. So the, the, you, you have a lot of different challenges in your classroom in dealing with you know uh, fourth and third grade levels plus uh, the students who are constantly demanding more information. Right and trying to keep that all going so my classroom gets pretty exciting we have a lot of group work a lot of independent work um, the kids uh, break up into um, partners to do a lot of their their work together and then come back and share their thinking or their partner's thinking. We do some group discussions, um, group presentations, whole class and then small groups. Last year we talked a lot about the drought and we got into um, pretty heavy discussion about whether Northern California should share water with Southern California. Oh, what were their responses to that? Um, no. <laughs> no sharing. <laughs> no sharing. <laughs> they had, they, uh, we brought in primary resources from the past and showing how the um, Salton Sea area was desert before and so their thoughts on the matter were they knew it was desert when they went there. Too bad. They should have thought about that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Enough said. It was. I couldn't, I couldn't complain with them on that. <laughs> so how long have you been a teacher now? Um, I've been teaching for 24 years. So I've seen everything from um, just the wonderful old mimeograph ditto machines mm -hmm. to now teaching um, with computers and laptops. And um, I'm getting a flat screen TV to be able to teach from this year. So yeah, it's changed a lot. What do you think is the biggest change that you've seen in your 24 years as a teacher? I think the biggest change is how fast technology and our society has changed so the kids change much faster and how that teaching, I'm not just teaching the traditional subjects I taught back um, in the 1980s, I'm teaching more about communication and how to get along and um, positive and negative things of your uh, reactions and the domino effect of you do one thing wrong and it gets passed on that I never would have thought I would have had to talk about over 20 years ago. 
So you, you, on the one hand, you're doing a lot of things that really traditionally teachers have always done in right. getting students to kind of work in, together and work in groups and your basic stuff, but now you have that high level technology too mm -hmm. where there's an expectation on the part of the student and the family that certain things will be there. Yeah. Do you find that the technology really does help keep students engaged? The technology does because they've been raised with it. It's interesting when you have um, an older computer and the kids are looking for the pad to scroll down and you have a mouse and you call it a mouse and they don't understand what that is. So it has changed drastically for that and they are used to that quick um, result. Everything mm -hmm. happens quick these days whereas in the past we would mail a letter, it would take two or three days to get there and two or three days if you get a response back and now you can text on the phone and mm -hmm. email and um, it's so much quicker. So you have, you have students who have quick expectations, almost an impatience. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that they want that, they want that immediate answer where I'm saying, hmm, let's try that again. And that doesn't always go over really well when mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not sure about that answer. Can you prove it to me? Do you agree with your partner? Do you both have the same idea? Did you both solve it the same way? And go back and look at it again where we're used to, oh, I've seen that before. I don't need to look at it again. Mm-hmm. Interesting, how, how you have to change and evolve. It does. With everything it, else. Yeah, it does, and that's I, one of the big dramatic thing is having kids to stick with it and getting that stamina or the term grit, you know, to be able to mm -hmm. attack a problem, whether it is discussion, reading, whatever, and stick with it, and um, not just have that immediate answer. I've got it. I'm done. I can go on to the next thing. So your gauge students are highly motivated students, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that they still need motivation. I mean, Absolutely. So, so, so you have kind of almost a, a double challenge because you've got highly motivated students but at the same time they still need a push sometimes. What, what do you do to, to motivate your students? Well the, there's a variety of different things that we do in the classroom to get it motivated. Usually group work usually helps because they have an area that they're really um, interested in. Maybe they're good at reading and di digesting that information and then presenting it. A lot of my students love presenting that group project, so even though they may not be interested in, like the drought we talked about. Um, I had one of my students say to me, you know, Mrs. Walden, I'm sorry, but I'm third grade. I'd rather play video games than be in, interested in the drought. Well, he turned out to be my biggest um, speaker on whether we should share water with the drought, and he started from the one who said, I don't, I'm not really interested. Uh -huh. So that working with the class and, and trying to look at it from a different perspective and how it does affect, you, affect us um, engaged him, and he really became um, a great leader of his group. So what about you? What motivates you uh, as a teacher? Um, what, what brings you into the classroom every day excited? I am blessed to be a teacher. I did quite a few other uh, professions before I became a teacher. And walking in the classroom, it just gets me excited every day, trying to figure out and predict what, um, the, what's going to happen in my classroom. Um, I'm planned for what I'm going to do during the day, but you never know what's going to happen and cause the day to go a little bit different and what is going to happen and how are they going to get excited and where will that conversation take us and I really wasn't prepared all the time for their answers and so it took us on a different, ta a different tact which was exciting but I was predicting they were going to go one way and they went the opposite direction so that gets me excited every year and every day to see which, which way, what's going to happen, what are these kids going to be thinking about this, what do they know about um, different things in history or science. And they what keep you they on break? your toes, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Every day. That's the exciting part. It is. It's what I love. Oh. Well, congratulations to Thank you. you. Uh, we've been speaking with Sue Walden, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the San Juan Unified School District. Congratulations. Thank you.